See, this is me. Boba Fett. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Chiss Ascendancy Podcast. This is Josiah, and we are on day 18 of 30 Days of Boba Fett. And today's subject is the lost family of Boba Fett. Uh, we've touched on this just a smidge the other day when we talked about uh, Boba Fett's ultimate revenge, but there are at least uh, four family members of Boba Fett that almost nobody knows about um, and that he barely has any relationship with. And so that's what we're going to get into today. Uh, the sources of this material are all legends, so none of this is canon, uh, but it's still interesting to know about the character. Uh, the first person that I want to talk to you about is a woman named Sentis Vell. And Sentis Vell is actually the wife of Boba Fett. And when Boba Fett finally got past the Clone Wars and, um, you know, moved on from killing the Jedi and all that kind of stuff, he actually uh, went back to Concord Dawn and took up, you know, the mantle of being a journeyman protector, uh, trying to live life more um, for other people and things like that. And he met a female Kif uh, Kifar, um, which if you don't know what that is, that's a species from the planet of Kifu. And probably the most famous Kifar is the male Jedi Quinlan Voss. Okay, so Sintus is from that same planet and they meet. Uh, he's a Mandalorian journeyman protector bounty hunter. She's a female bounty hunter. They fall in love and... Um, I'm unsure. I want to say that she does take up Mandalorian armor, but I'm unsure. Uh, but the uh, the main, I guess, break in their relationship was the fact that uh, Boba Fett actually found uh, a man attacking Sentis and forcing himself on her, and end up uh, the man ended up raping his wife. And so, of course, just like any other husband would do, Boba Fett actually kills this attacker. And when this takes place. Uh, he is he is stripped of any ranking within the Mandalorian journeyman protectors, um, not because he was defending his wife, but for the act of murder. And so uh, during this time, he was, you know, they were both young. I think he was 18 and maybe she was 20 or something like that. Very, very close in age, very young in life. And uh, so they, they end up, I think the trauma of this experience causes them to go separate ways. And in Legends, this is the secondary catalyst to Boba Fett having that protective, uh, that, that shell that he puts on. Um, obviously, you know, the, the mask, no pun intended, that we kind of uh, know Boba Fett for. Not just the actual outer Mandalorian armor, but just that protectiveness that's keeping his distance from other people. Uh, so Sentis Vell. And uh, very interestingly, uh, it was later after her split and divorce from Boba Fett that Sentis was uh, was on a job. Of course, she kept, you know, uh, bounty hunting and, you know, as a gun for hire and things like that. And Sentis was actually placed in carbonite. Now, we know that being placed in carbonite is very, very dangerous for human beings. That's not what it's really made for. Uh, and so... Sentis was placed in carbonite for a number of years. I want to say it was about 40 years she was in carbonite. And it isn't until towards the end of the Second Galactic Civil War that she is actually located and freed from that carbonite. So it's a very interesting moment where let's say she's, uh, you know, let's say she's 25 or 30 years old and Boba Fett by this time is 65 or 70 years old. And she's freed from this carbonite and she's blind at first, of, you know, of course, uh, a la Han Solo from Return of the Jedi. But uh, when she comes to, she is greeted by her granddaughter, Myrta, and Boba Fett, her ex-husband. Of course, she doesn't know who Boba Fett is at this time because she's blind. She can't, you know, see the face. And uh, obviously he would look much different, but he also sounds much different. And so... Uh, there, there's a difference there. Now, she is, does appear in some comics, and so if you're in, interested in that, um, I'll put uh, the, the list of comics she's in in the description section. Uh, but you do see uh, Boba Fett and her working together for a time, and it's just for a, uh, just a few comic books, I believe. Um, and then the second uh, member of Boba Fett's family that 
is mentioned very sparingly that we don't know much about, and we talked about her a few days ago, is uh, Aelin Vell, also known as Aelin Haber. This was the daughter of Boba Fett and Sentis Vell. Now, when this whole uh, calamity took place in the life and marriage of Boba Fett and Sentis Vell, and they split up, uh, Sentis took Aelin with her. So Boba Fett had a daughter, uh, but I think that... Um, I'm not sure that they split, you know, out of anger or anything. I just think there was uh, there was just damage done in that relationship as a result of that attack that she took uh, and the the murder that he committed. And because of those irreconcilable differences, uh, it seems that um, there was not much space in Sentis or Aelin's life for Boba. And so Aelin, uh, Boba Fett is aware of her, but he does not have a relationship with her and never really reconnects with her, which I think is something that really, um, beneath the surface harms Boba when he finds out that she's been killed specifically by Jason Solo. So you have Sentis Vell, which is the ex-wife of Boba Fett that he met early on in life. And then you have their daughter together, Aelin Vell, who died by the hand of Jason Solo. Um, I want to say that's in the Bloodlines book of the Legacy of the Force uh, series. And then they, uh, Aelin had a daughter named Myrta Gev. So Myrta uh, is the granddaughter of Boba Fett. And it turns out that Myrta, when she, the reason she meets her grandfather... Uh, Boba Fett is because she's actually trying to kill him. I think she's upset with him for the state of uh, her mother's uh, well-being and their relationship. And there's there's been a lot of hard times in Aelin's life that Myrta believes Boba Fett could have been there for or helped in. And so uh, you actually have three generations uh, specifically of, of women who are uh, related to Boba Fett who are really only explored in this one series. So you have Sentis Vell. Now she's mentioned and she's she's a, a character in the Legacy of the Force series, but she's also in those comic books, like I mentioned before. Their daughter, Aelin Haber, who we almost know nothing about, uh, who tragically died during interrogation by Jason Solo. So we never get to see that reunion between her and her father, but we do get to see Aelin's legacy uh, live on through the granddaughter, Myrta, who actually does end up growing uh, pretty close, I would say, to Boba Fett by the end of the Legacy of the Force series. So by the ending of the uh, Second Galactic Civil War, uh, Myrta and Boba have a, a decent relationship, as close as a relationship as you can have to someone like Boba Fett. Um, he's teaching her, training her, and she's actually found a home on Mandalore where Boba Fett rules. Uh, now, the fourth person I want to talk about is, to me, the most interesting of these four uh, these four people. Uh, this is actually the aunt of Boba Fett. Now, I know in, in canon, uh, Jango Fett is adopted into the Mandalorian culture, but in Legends, um, he had a sister named Arla Fett. And Arla was actually Jango Fett's older sister. Uh, if you want to see what Arla looks like, of course, I'll put a picture here in the video. But if you're either, you know, watching this as you drive, you can't really look or you're listening via audio, you can find her in the very first issue of Jango Fett Open Seasons, the graphic novel um, that came out years and years ago from Dark Horse Comics. And uh, there's a moment where... Uh, there's the true Mandalorians, which are led by a man named Jaster Mareel. Now, I have a feeling that Jaster is going to be made canon uh, because you can see part of his name in Boba Fett's chain code that is shown in The Mandalorian Season 2. But that is, uh, that's basically like Jango Fett's adoptive father from Legends. And that's really um, who Boba Fett aspired to live up to because Jango aspired to live up to him. Uh, but in this comic book, Jango Fett Open Seasons, uh, on Concord Dawn, the moon of Mandalore, which is really where more things take place than Mandalore itself in the Legends continuity. Uh, there are the true Mandalorians, which are led by Jaster Mareel, but then you have um, you have the Death Watch, which are led by a man named Visla. And, of course, we know that there's pre Visla and other characters like that, Tar Visla, um, from the canon aspect of things, but in Legends, the Visla clan, there was nothing good about them. There was no, you know, Tar Visla is this Jedi Knight that created the Darksaber, and there's some merit there. And uh, even uh, even um, Sabine uh, is, seems to have, you know, 
you know, some ties to the Visla clan. They're good characters. In Legends, the Visla uh, clan is nothing but trouble. And the Death Watch, who in canon, Mandal uh, Clone Wars Season 7 and the Siege of Mandalore, the Death Watch turn good, and they're there to take Mandalore back from the Shadow Collective with Maul and all those guys. In Legends, they're completely evil. There is no good in them. Uh, the true Mandalorians also believe in the warrior culture of Mandalore, but the Death Watch are just violent for violence' sake. And so um, uh, Jango Fett's father and Jango Fett's mother are killed right in front of them, and then you have... Uh, his sister Arla Fett and uh, there's a moment where they say what do we do with this girl and uh, they say we have no need for her and you would think that meant that they killed her but actually they took her in and uh, kind of kept her as a prisoner as a prize and they ended up branding the death watch symbol onto her back and she kind of has this Stockholm syndrome uh, and ends up becoming an assassin for the Death Watch until she is imprisoned uh, for being a part of a violent act that takes place. And so years and years she's in prison, but her mental state is so uh, unstable because her father was killed in front of her. Her mother was killed in front of her. Her brother, she doesn't know where, you know, where Django ends up. So she becomes mentally unstable and they end up moving her from regular prison into some kind of mental hospital. And this is where she is when a Jedi that actually ends up leaving the order by the name of Bardan Jusik is, uh, they're they're in they're on Coruscant and there's this moment during the Republic Commando series by Karen Travis where they're trying to figure out how do we get um, this family unit, which is the the Scarada clan who are clone troopers, but they've been raised by Cal Scarada. How do we get them out of the Imperial Army before all of this goes south? How do we take them in and make them a, a part of our Mandalorian family so they don't have to keep just being a number on a on a on a roll sheet and during this sequence of trying to get, gather all the intel and get these guys out of here, they actually discover there's someone in this prison that is speaking Mandoa, that is speaking a language similar to what they hear back home on Mandalore and Concordon. And it turns out it's Arla Fett, and she is mentally unstable, but uh, Jedi Jusik uh, gets her out of this prison, they break her out, and over the years... They end up transporting her back to Mandalore, where I believe she regains her sanity. So Arla Fett is someone that's just barely mentioned by name in Republic Commando um, Order 66. And she's expounded on a little bit in Republic or Imperial Commando 501st. Uh, this was a character that I really feel was going to be developed in the next leg of that Karen Travis series, the final uh, book in that series that was never written. Um, but... It's a very interesting character. It's a character I really wish if Legends still existed, if we could still expound on those stories, I would have loved for Arla and Boba Fett to reunite because they have Jango Fett in common. And it'd be very interesting to hear Arla say, oh, I knew Jango when he was six or seven or eight years old. What was he like? And then you have Boba who says, you know, well, and it'd be interesting because Boba would look like what she remembered Django looking like. And Boba can tell her the man that her brother grew up to be before he was killed. So there'd be this awesome connection moment. But there you have it. Day 18 of 30 Days of Boba Fett, the missing family. You have his wife slash ex-wife, Sintas Vell, his daughter, Aelin Vell, his granddaughter, Mir Tegev, and his long-lost aunt that I believe never met which was Arla Fett. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you did, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, consider following us on Instagram and Twitter. Thank you for listening, and may the Force be with you.